hello students here this is another online lecture of the microeconomics we are going to start this chapter of the theory of production as we have completed our previous chapter that was consumer theory as both chapters are related with each other um, in the context of uh, so many things but obviously there are little bit differences between consumer theory and production theory uh, the consumer uh, always wants to maximize their satisfaction uh, and uh, the producer they will also and always wants to uh, maximize their production and they always want to maximize minimize their cost also production and cost theory is interrelated with each other as we will discuss later on the cost of production also so here uh, we are going to start <coughs> the production theory uh, first of all actually uh, the production is transformation of input into the output so actually um, what is input and what are the output whenever you talk about four factors of production this is your input and you use those four factors of production and you produce output so a function that defines the maximum amount of output that can be produced with with a given set of inputs there are so many definitions of the production function and here the actually uh, the production function describes a boundary or frontier representing the limit of output obtainable from each feasible combination of inputs it means you are using some specific inputs and you are producing some outputs and it also gives the information about increasing or decreasing returns to scale and the marginal productivity of labor and capital uh, this is showing about the production functions so here um, first of all you talk about inputs these are land labor capital and entrepreneurship these are four factors of production and by using these four factors of production you produce cars houses foods and computers by using these four factors of production so uh, by using inputs you are producing output this is called your production function and this is also depicting the same thing now it means uh, here you can see here you are not discussing the raw material but here uh, the production function uh, depends on input and output and in input you use the physical capital technology labor skills knowledge and raw materials these are all inputs and you produce the output from that so mathematically whenever you talk about the relationship between inputs and outputs these can be uh, expressed as the quantity is the function of uh, labor capital and land actually this can be written as in the in this way uh, so uh, mostly we are concerned with the labor and capital as in some books this c can be written as k or you can write here at c uh, it will not create any difference so it is about labor and capital uh, whenever they hire labor and whenever they uh, uh, they have some capital they produce more output uh, this is the production function uh, you can see here this uh, production function this is concave and uh, here uh, this can be written as y is equals to y small y you, uh, or uh, this can be written as y is equals to function of capital and labor and uh, here um, input and output 
you are giving the output here it means you are writing here quantity and here you can write uh, labor and capital both Uh, then uh, there is long debate about uh, the factors of uh, production fixed and variable factors of production uh, whenever we talk about um, short run production function uh, it means there is a shorter period of time and uh, we can hire only the labors and output uh, will also low so um, uh, fixed factors are the input the manager cannot adjust in the short run so whenever we talk about the variable uh, factors it means the variable factor is also called um, the capital and these are uh, those factors that can adjustable or they also put influence or impact on the production function also uh, here are uh, some features of uh, production function and it means the uh, the production function can be substitutes and can be here can be complementarity or specificity um, it means the factors first of all the factors of production labor and capital can be substitute uh, way of the uh, one and other um, by it means the changing the quantity of one or a few inputs uh, while the quantities of all other inputs are held constant substitutes means you are making the capital as a constant and you are hiring more and more labors whenever you are changing your labor um, uh, you are uh, hiring the um, more labors your capital is fixed and this uh, this uh, substitutes will be uh, applied on the uh, law of variable proportions and uh, second one is uh, about uh, complementarity and uh, uh, it means the factors of production can be used together as nothing will be produced if the quantity of either of the inputs used in the production process is uh, zero so the both factors of production will use simultaneously and uh, mm, uh, this principle is uh, uh, this principle of returns to scale is another manifestation of uh, complementarity so first of all whenever you talk about substitutes it means in case of substitutes this the law of variable proportion will be uh, applicable and in case of complementarity here as you can see here in case of uh, complementarity the returns to scale will be applicable and whenever you talk about uh, specificity it means you are uh, specifying some uh, important factors of production means uh, machines and equipments specialized workers and raw materials are a few examples of uh, specificity of factors of production so here um, it uh, production involves time hence the way the inputs are combined is determined to a larger extent by the time period under uh, consideration so it means the greater the uh, time period the greater the freedom the producer has to vary the quantities of various inputs used in the production process so first of all in uh, we are specifying some inputs uh, to produce uh, some outputs it means the machines and equipments specialized workers and raw materials we are specifying these inputs we are specifying that there are four factors of production and by using those factors of production you are producing something we are specifying some factors of production whenever you specify some factors of production it means you are uh, producing some output so uh, short run and long run decisions uh, it is also about the short run period uh, is about hiring more labors and a long run decision is um, you are the labor is no more fixed and here you are talking about the uh, sorry capital is not more fixed in long run decision so it means you are hiring more labor and capital and you are producing more so whenever you talk about the uh, short run decision 
it is essentially a function of labor since the capital is fixed here and uh, whenever you talk about long run decision uh, it is the long run time horizon and uh, if it takes a company three years to acquire additional capital machine okay so the short run period will be less than three years in short run you cannot implant new factory new industry your capital is fixed but you can only hire labors that's why when you are hiring more and more labors their marginal productivity of the labor will be zero because the equipment is fixed their um, machinery is fixed and whenever you talk about labors it means you uh, the machinery is no more fixed and you are talking about uh, the long run decision of the labor and capital so in short run decision this capital is shown by the steric sign and here you are saying quantity is the function of k steric l or in other words this can be written as only the function of labor it means here the capital is fixed but whenever you uh, talk about the um, long run so here the long run this case steric will be um, uh, ended and here you can uh, only uh, write down quantity is the function of labor and capital um, so this uh, table uh, I'm uh, going to give you a task that you can complete this table by your own then you can understand the concept of short run and long run here you can easily see the case static this is called fixed input capital and this is two this is fixed for, for all periods of time and uh, here um, you are hiring the labors which is variable factor uh, which is changing from 0 to 11 and in third uh, third column you can see uh, this third column is showing the change in labor which is showing change 1 1 minus 0 is 1 2 minus 1 is 1 3 minus 2 is 1 so it is showing 1 and the fourth column it is showing the output so here uh, these things will be uh, given to you that output till output this is given now you can find your marginal productivity of labor and the average productivity of labor here they have um, uh, found the change in labor only to show the marginal productivity of the labor but uh, later on i will tell you the concept of uh, total productivity of the labor which is q and marginal productivity of labor and average productivity of the labor here you can see here the quantity will be start from 0 to till 2156 and you can find out the value of marginal productivity of labor which is change in q divided by change in l here the <coughs> change in q um, means uh, first thing here it is zero and afterwards uh, if there was some point that can be zero so zero minus zero divided by zero that will be infinity and here it will be shown by this uh, blank <coughs> so again uh, you can again here you can find out the marginal productivity of the labor 76 minus 0 divided by 1 this is 76 so 248 minus 76 this is 172 172 this is change in l divided by uh, this is divided by change in l okay so you are talking about this so, uh, 172 so you can find out the marginal productivity of the labor here it is showing by hiring the 11th labor your marginal productivity will become minus so you cannot hire more labors and here you are showing the average productivity of the labor which is showing only the q over l you can divide this q by this l and again whenever anything divided by zero will give you infinity which is un uh, which is unlimited or you cannot identify your infinity sign how much it is so you will draw here the blank and this is showing all the table is showing about the average and marginal productivity of the labor showing this all about the short run uh, decisions
now this is showing here uh, the short run decision uh, of the production function which uh, you can easily hear showing the production theory is a function of a firm which, which uses inputs to produce maximum output production function kisi bhi firm ka ek aisa function hota hai jiske zariye ek firm inputs ko use karke maximum output produce karta hai inputs mein labor और मशीनरी शामिल होती है जिसको यूज करके मैक्सिमम आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस किया जाता है फॉर एग्जांपल वी हैव टू लेबर्स लेबर वन एंड लेबर टू एंड आल्सो हैव टू कैपिटल्स कैपिटल वन एंड कैपिटल टू जब लेबर वन कैपिटल वन पर काम करता है और लेबर टू कैपिटल टू पर काम करता है तो 20 यूनिट्स की प्रोडक्शन करता है बट अगर लेबर वन कैपिटल टू पर काम करे और लेबर टू कैपिटल वन पर काम करे तो इस फार्म को 16 यूनिट्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन हासिल होती है तो 16 यूनिट्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन को हम इन एफिशेंट प्रोडक्शन कहेंगे यानी मैक्सिमम आउटपुट नहीं कहेंगे और 20 यूनिट्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन को हम मैक्सिमम आउटपुट या एफिशेंट प्रोडक्शन कहेंगे तो प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन मीन्स डैट के कोई फार्म इनपुट्स यानी लेबर एंड कैपिटल को यूज करके मैक्सिमम आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस करता है यानी जो एग्जांपल मैंने दी कि वो 20 यूनिट्स ऑफ आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस करता है दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन जिसको एक इक्वेशन के जरिए हम समझते हैं वाई इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ लेबर एंड कैपिटल वाई आउटपुट को रिप्रेजेंट करता है एल लेबर को और के कैपिटल को जाहिर करता है जब हम लेबर और कैपिटल को इंक्रीज करते हैं तो हमारे पास आउटपुट भी इंक्रीज होती है एंड दिस इक्वेशन इज आल्सो नॉन एज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन आउटपुट एंड इनपुट आउटपुट डिपेंड्स ऑन इनपुट या हम ये भी कह सकते हैं कि आउटपुट डिपेंड करता है इनपुट्स पर जब इनपुट्स इंक्रीज या डिक्रीज होती हैं तो आउटपुट भी इंक्रीज या डिक्रीज होता है नाउ लेट्स मूव टूवर्ड्स दी शॉर्ट रन प्रोडक्शन इन द शॉर्ट रन अ फर्म कैन नॉट चेंज ऑल द इनपुट्स कोई भी फार्म शॉर्ट रन में अपनी तमाम इनपुट्स यानी फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन को चेंज नहीं कर सकता इनपुट्स में टू काइंड ऑफ फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन होते हैं एक किस्म को फिक्सड फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कहते हैं और दूसरी किस्म को वेरिएबल फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कहते हैं यानी एक किस्म के फैक्टर ऑफ प्रोडक्शन फिक्स होते हैं और दूसरी किस्म फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन वेरी करते हैं फिक्स्ड फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन में वो तमाम कैपिटल शामिल होता है जो किसी भी फार्म को चलाने के लिए इस्तेमाल होता है यानी हम किसी फार्म में न्यू मशीनरी इंस्टॉल नहीं कर सकते या मोर कैपिटल को इंस्टॉल नहीं कर सकते या हम किसी फार्म को एक्सपेंड नहीं कर सकते क्योंकि इसके लिए काफ़ी मकदार में इन्वेस्टमेंट की ज़रूरत होती है जो कि कोई भी फार्म इन शॉर्ट रन मैनेज नहीं कर सकती और शॉर्ट टर्म का जो पीरियड होता है वो भी बहुत कम होता है जो थ्री मंथ्स सिक्स मंथ्स और इन सम केसेस इट मे बी वन ईयर और टू ईयर तो इतने कम अरसे में प्रोडक्शन को इंक्रीज करने के लिए हम फिक्स्ड फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन में इंक्रीज नहीं कर सकते जो दूसरी किस्म की हमारे पास वेरिएबल फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन होते हैं जिनमें लेबल्स शामिल होता है तो उसमें हम इंक्रीज या डिक्रीज कर सकते हैं सो दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रोडक्शन इन शॉर्ट रन द नेक्स्ट वन वी हैव इज लॉन्ग रन प्रोडक्शन इन द लॉन्ग रन आल फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कैन बी चेंज फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेबर एंड कैपिटल एक्सेट्रा लॉन्ग रन में कोई भी फॉर्म तमाम फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन को चेंज कर सकते हैं जिसमें लेबर और कैपिटल दोनों शामिल हैं यानी जब किसी भी फॉर्म ने अपनी प्रोडक्शन को इंक्रीज करनी है तो इन द लॉन्ग रन वो तमाम फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन को इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं ये फॉर्म नई मशीनरी भी इंस्टॉल कर सकती है और नंबर ऑफ लेबर्स को भी इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं यानी फिक्स्ड फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन को भी इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं जिसमें कैपिटल लैंड शामिल होता है या अपनी फार्म को एक्सपेंड कर सकते हैं किसी दूसरी सिटी में भी उसकी प्रोडक्शन स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं एंड ऑफ कोर्स नंबर ऑफ लेबर्स को भी वो इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं जो वेरिएबल फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कहलाता है और लॉन्ग रन में जो टाइम ऑफ पीरियड होता है वो मोर देन टू ईयर्स होता है यू कैन से थ्री ईयर्स फाइव ईयर्स टेन ईयर्स और ट्वेंटी ईयर्स तो लॉन्ग रन में प्रोडक्शन के लिए किसी भी फर्म के साथ काफ़ी टाइम होता है और वो न्यू मशीनरी इंस्टॉल करके न्यू मशीनरी ऐड करके अपनी प्रोडक्शन को इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं सो दिस वॉज अबाउट द लॉन्ग रन एंड 
short run here how could you uh, measure the productivity uh, productivity can be equals to output over input and you know output means uh, whenever you use the input whenever you um, give the time to uh, research output is uh, you can throw some uh, articles whenever you give hours you can make the good ideas whenever you put funds uh, you can uh, make the output as in some factory and uh, everything is that so here uh, this diagram is showing whenever you implant the labor and capital these are inputs you can give the productivity and then it will create the output so productivity and output are are actually interrelated with each other and inputs and output are also interdependent on one another here are some um, measures of productivity uh, which are total product average product and marginal product as i have shown previously the table which is showing the total product average and marginal product of the labor so here uh, this is the, what is total product total product is actually simply the maximum level of output that can be produced with a given amount of inputs it means the labor is given amount of input labor is variable and capital is fixed so total productivity can be written as total output divided by total input but how could you write down the total product that will be quantity is function of labor and capital which can be k steric average product is defining the average of uh, production process that uh, average product of an input is defined the total product divided by the quantity used of the input so here the average product of the labor can be written as the quantity divided by l as you are finding the mean or the per unit of the labor so this is the method that uh, this is showing the uh, efficiency of the labor so here you will divide the uh, production uh, by your labor then you can easily find out the average productivity of the labor so here it is showing the marginal productivity of the capital as you um, also calculate the marginal productivity of the labor um, which can be zero which can be negative so this is actually a marginal product of an input is the change in total output it is change in total output attributable to the last unit of an input input here it is if it is change in k so this can be written as marginal product of the capital can be written as partial q over partial k or delta q over delta k and whenever you talk about marginal productivity of the labor that can be written as partial q over partial l or change in q divided by change in l so uh, this uh, th these are showing the marginal productivity of the uh, labor or the marginal productivity of the capital it means whenever uh, you are hiring the labors you are producing the extra output for example any organization who uh, was hiring the 10 laborers and their productivity was 50 and whenever uh, they hired the extra one uh, labor which is 11th labor and their productivity was increased uh, till the 54 so whenever you uh, uh, you want to find out the marginal productivity of the labor that will be four it means uh, whenever you hired the labor it has given you the extra four units it means uh, these uh, labors are uh, actually increasing the efficiency uh, here uh, the concept of uh, increasing marginal uh, returns and decreasing marginal returns and negative marginal returns uh, for showing this uh, i will show you this uh, table and this table is also showing you the increasing decreasing and negative marginal returns and these can be shown by this marginal productivity of the labor as you hire 
more and more laborers from 0 to 11 what will be happen with marginal productivity of the labor first of all you can see from here from the 76 till 244 the, the, you can see here the phenomena of average productivity of labor marginal productivity of labor and total productivity of labor which is q whenever you are hiring the labors from uh, 0 to 8 okay mm, so what uh, 0 to 8 no, not 8 you can see here till uh, for example you are talking about his uh, 3 one six whenever you are hiring the any organization is hiring the labor from zero to six what will happen the um, uh, total productivity will increase at increasing rate so that's why it is called increasing returns to scale uh, um, you are talking about 76 till 316 uh, or you can also uh, explain uh, in this way that whenever any organization will hire the labor from 0 to 5 their marginal uh, their total productivity here this is actually the total productivity of the labor so total productivity will increase at increasing rate here till 316 okay and by hiring six unit the total productivity here you can see this is um, total productivity will be um, increasing here uh, this uh, graph is little bit different this is only showing the three returns increasing decreasing and negative so um, uh, from uh, increasing decreasing and negative return you have to see this phenomena of marginal productivity of labor which is from 76 till 316 it is increasing then 292 till 76 it is falling and then it is showing the negative return at the 11th unit of the labor and here uh, whenever the marginal productivity will become negative the total productivity is falling by itself uh, from hiring uh, 0 to as you can see uh, um, 0 to till 7th uh, 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 till uh, till uh, six unit uh, there is increasing returns to scale and from 7 to 10 units this is decreasing returns to scale and at 11th unit this is showing the negative return to scale and returns to scale is showing through the marginal productivity of the labor it is showing these scales uh, uh, range of input usage over which marginal product increases this is called increasing marginal returns and then decreasing marginal returns uh, range of input over which marginal product declines and here the negative marginal returns where marginal product is negative this is your task that you can find out the law of uh, variable proportions by using the um, any uh, specific table and you can um, use the table from your uh, principle of microeconomics book easily uh, um, because from that book you can uh, easily show that uh, uh, the stages of or interdependence of average marginal uh, and uh, total productivity and that uh, which uh, I was explaining about the increasing return as you can see here this is actually the total productivity curve and this is average productivity and this is marginal productivity in some tables they have given the value of marginal productivity or is zero also which is showing total productivity is maximum it is changing the curvature here so the total productivity here it is maximum and afterwards it will fall so here uh, first of all um, you can see the average and marginal product are also increasing so uh, the and total product is also increasing at increasing rate it is increasing returns to scale so after that uh, uh, whenever the total uh, productivity increases at decreasing rate it is called decreasing marginal returns and whenever the marginal product is negative and total product is falling this is called uh, negative marginal returns so these are actually the showing phases of marginal returns um, whenever you are hiring more and more 
labors um, the labor will increase uh, in the certain rate it means uh, the productivity will be different uh, means uh, the total productivity average productivity and marginal productivity will increase in a different rate these are also called the law of variable proportions and you can easily um, use the other um, table or other uh, other uh, any table that is given in your uh, principle of microeconomics by George Menkeev book um, or a principle Menkeev book uh, you can see from here that uh, how could you find out the phases of marginal returns you can go through from here um, And this is the first video of a three-part playlist. In this tutorial, I don't use any numbers or calculus. I just introduce you to the ideas of total product, marginal product, and average product, and their relationships. It turns out quantity produced mm -hmm. is equal to some function of labor and capital. And in your textbooks, you'll see Q is equal to function, or F means function, of L, and capital is denoted by K. So quantity is a function of labor and capital. And sometimes, since capital is fixed, that's what that little line over the top means, it's fixed, it's written as mm -hmm. quantity is equal to quantity is equal to a function of labor. Along the x-axis I'm going to graph units of labor and that can be number of workers or hours. Along the y-axis or the vertical axis I have units of output or quantity. As labor is added I produce a quantity. L1 is my labor and Q1 is the quantity. If I add more labor, I produce more. Now L2 is my labor and Q2 is my quantity. But if I keep adding labor, a point comes in time where I'll actually produce less. So I have L3 and Q3. And you'll learn why that is in this video and the subsequent two videos. And this is the total product curve. The brown line is a total product curve. Again, holding capital fixed or constant. Now if I take that same unit of labor line, horizontal line, and I pull it down like that, that's units of labor. And on the y-axis, I have units of output per worker. Now I can plot average product now, average product is the amount of labor, in this case L1, divided into the amount of quantity, is average product. In other words, quantity divided by labor is equal to average product. Your professor and your textbooks probably use the notation APL to represent average product of labor. I'll just use average product. Now if I pull labor straight down, then average product is Q1 divided by L1 at that point in time. Marginal product is a little different. Let me draw that curve in. The blue line is marginal product of labor. Let me add labor and quantity at point 1, and also labor and quantity at point 2. L2 and Q2. If I add some labor, how much does quantity go up or change? By the way, that little triangle, that little delta, means change in. So marginal product is the change in quantity divided by the change in labor, which is equal to Q2 minus 
Q1 divided by L2 minus L1. This is all equal to marginal product. Also, it may be written in your textbooks as MPL, which means marginal product of labor. So it looks something like this. You may recognize this as, hopefully, maybe you recognize this, the rise, and this is the run. So we have rise over run. which is equal to the slope. So marginal product is equal to the slope of the total product curve at any particular point. In this case, we let the change in labor be very small. In fact, the change in labor is one labor unit. So in essence, we want to know is if labor goes up one unit, how much does quantity produce change? It's a slope of the total product curve. Marginal product of labor is a slope of the total product curve. A tangent line at any point on that total product curve is the slope or the rate of change. And that's also marginal productivity of labor at every point. And some points are more interesting than others. For example, this is where marginal productivity of, of labor is zero. And then it goes negative. If I draw a tangent line and just touch the total product curve like that, and I draw a straight line down, what that shows me is at that point, average product is equal to marginal product. Another point of interest is when that tangent line is flat and that means the rate of change is zero or the slope is zero. So it crosses the horizontal axis right at the zero point there. That value there is zero. And anything beyond this point, the slope is negative. So now I have three distinct regions, or stages. I have stage one, which is the first part there, stage two, and stage three. Stage one is increasing average product. Where marginal product is greater than average product. Stage two is decreasing average product, but I still have a positive marginal product. Stage three is a decreasing total product and a negative marginal product. And with negative marginal product, total product is actually falling. Adding more labor causes total product to fall. One last idea is diminishing marginal returns, and that's from that point forward where marginal product of labor, the slope is actually negative or decreasing. Again, total product is actually, I should say quantity is a function of labor and capital where I have fixed capital. And so it is quantity is a function of labor. Often in your textbooks, you'll see this labeled as TP, or total product, TPL, actually. You'll see AP representing average product, APL, and MPL representing marginal product of labor. Up next, I'm going to do the same thing.